this morning. So glad to see you all on this morning. And um, thank you, uh, thank you all for y'all support on the stuff we're doing and the stuff we're thinking about doing. I just feel like we should beef it up. I'm gonna beef it up some more, y'all. I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna slow down. We're gonna beef up and do more stuff. Um, I just feel the Lord tugging me to do more. So we're gonna do it and uh, see what the Lord leads us and how He leads us. Uh, we walk by faith, not by sight. Um, so it doesn't matter what you're dealing with. I want to remind you of that, because that you know, the, when it comes to the kingdom, you are a citizen, and then the king's domain in his domain or in his world, which has inserted itself inside of the world. Remember, the earth was filled with darkness. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And light, God said, let there be light. So light inserted itself inside of darkness in the space where darkness was. And so he didn't eliminate the darkness. He just inserted himself and started to create and form a system outside of the system of darkness. And the system of darkness don't really understand how all this is possible. Like, how did you invade my territory where I'm the ruler, destroy dinosaurs? I'm God here. It might be dark, but at least I'm God. You know, God came in and said, now nah, I'm going to make this man. And he's still going to be the dominant force in the earth. So he commanded him, said, have dominion. And so God, people who are inside the king's domain or inside of the kingdom, um, they believe God and he is faithful and they don't walk by what they see because sometimes what you can see can appear to be a reality and it can be really uh, not you might be looking at the form of something but not the end result so sometimes you just have to stand still wait be patient like your father uh, believe like your father and allow the Lord to show you the end of the thing uh, and then that is bigger and better than the process of what you're seeing. All right. So, uh, so I don't know who that's for, but just believe God. You got to believe God, even when it doesn't look like it's happening, even when it seems and appears to be, you know, like, oh man, it's not, you know, we serve a God. If you don't know, um, you know, we serve a God that deals with something called suddenly, you know, suddenly, uh, and then. You know, things can be this way one minute and then suddenly change and it'd be a whole nother thing. I promise you. I mean, you know, my wife, before we came here, uh, we were working our jobs and we were, you know, we were, I would like to think we were pretty, pretty happy and good, you know, and, you know, things weren't perfect, but they were good and we were okay. And then, bam, suddenly happened. <laughs> and now you hit something else. And you can live a life of suddenly, okay? When you're dealing with this God of ours, our Father, he is very much into pack up your stuff and go leave this land and your, your kinfolk and your people and go to this land. I'm going to show you. He is very much a God of uh, go up into this, up, up into that wilderness and leave, leave this, leave Egypt and get off into this wilderness. Come talk to me. He's very much a God of go into Canaan and I know all what's in there, but you go get it. All those are changing moves, man. And God has a way of changing positions and positioning you differently. So. Um, as the Lord begins to move and shift you, uh, whether it's a job, whether it's a home, whether it's a location, whatever it is, um, stand and believe God and trust him for those doors. And you will know because, uh, you know, you don't have to fight. There will be some resistance, but you won't have to fight. The Lord will open up doors and that you can just walk through. All right. Uh, so don't even question it. Just walk through it. All right. Okay. Ask him for leading, acknowledge him, and then allow him to lead you. All right. Okay, let's get over into Ephesians. Let's dig into the book. All right. How many of you remember where we left off? <laughs> y'all should be tired of Ephesians. Y'all should be going, oh, y'all probably sitting there like, oh my God, no more Ephesians. Is that what's, are you all feeling Ephesians? Is this, is this information good? I, I, I see you, I see you. <laughs> you wrote it down there. You're like, don't, don't take us back too far again. Uh, okay, all right. So um, uh, I hope Ephesians is blessing you because it is a serious matter. Um, one of the things you will always experience in the body of Christ is that there's going to be pressure. Uh, and it's not fair. I mean, I would share some stories, but I don't feel the ones I would share with is appropriate timing on them. Uh, I'll share them later. But listen, let me tell you something, okay? Um, in real life, circumstances will happen 
And the enemy, your enemy don't play fair. Okay, he will do things to try to make you get in a shell, make you get, you know, feel pressured and, and try to shrink you up and make you get, I mean, especially when you're dealing with, with things. So just, just, you know, when you're dealing with life and, and people you, uh, it could be people you care for, it could be jobs, it can be, he will work through, and people you love, he will work through people you love, you do, who generally love you. And, and they will say and do things at times that are just, and it's all inspired to get you to crumble. I mean, go read about Job. You'll see. Um, you know, it was his own family. And he lost all his kids, okay? Uh, but people, people, you know, you, people are tools. And when we know that, uh, we'll see we're wrestling against something else. And that's what Ephesians does for us. All right, so let's go take a look at it. Uh, we're going to look at um, Ephesians 3 uh, and so uh, just know that God is when God is with you man what did the book say just, just listen to the book the book said if if God be for you he is now you just stop right there because anytime God is means that he is inserting his situ himself in the situation and really He's going to allow his operation. Because just think about it, man. If God had to take time to stop for every single believer situation to get an answer done or to move on it, he would be so busy he wouldn't have time. <laughs> so he set a system up in place. He's got angels who got charge over us. Uh, they are governing powers. And when we speak, heaven hears. Amen. Praise God. All the all the all the rams here. When you talk, man, you've got God inside of you, and when you speak, man, I tell you, when you cry tears, I can show it to you. Uh, when you cry tears, God knows, man, you are so important. Oh my God, why am I getting pulled like this? You are so important. You need to really know how valuable you really are. Amen. You know, God know how many numbers. You know how often my wife is cut her hair. Okay, let me see. The do you know God knows how many number of hairs is on your head? Don't make me show you. Listen to me. You are important. You don't get to, you don't, you, listen, you do not get to devalue yourself at all. No, you get up out that mud, you stand on your, your feet, you are precious in God's sight. Now, that's, stop it. Okay? God is faithful, and he will strengthen you, and he has strengthened you. And he's put everything that you need right here where you need it. So you just stand up, you wipe those tears, and you keep marching. Amen, praise God. Amen. I know people ain't done you right. I know, I know, I know. Trust me. Whew. But you pick yourself up, and you keep marching. Amen, praise God. Come on now. God is faithful. Let me get on over in Ephesians and get out of that space. Let me tell you something. I know I'm not telling you what I think. I, I, you know, one of the prayers that I pray in the morning. I don't pray in the morning, but have been inspired at times in prayer. Because prayer changes, you know, and um, but has come up for several times. I've been forsaken. You've been. You can be forsaken by everybody. Okay. Everybody. I mean, I'm talking friends, family relatives, our kids, they will all forsake you and not knowingly do it. Just, and you know, mentally give up on you. But, but, but God? Okay. All right, I'm done. All right, I just need you to know that because you're not alone. All right, even when you feel like you're alone, you're never alone. You got all of heaven behind you and you don't walk by what you see. You walk by faith. And so you walk by what the words say. That's what you're governed by. You ain't governed by all that. You're governed by the word. You were born by the word. You were birthed by the word. Hear me. So don't you not listen to me. You hear me. You were birthed by the word of God. When you became a believer, somebody preached the word to you. And that happens to be what this whole system called the, that, that this world sits on. You were birthed by the word of God. Somebody spoke the living word. You heard the living word. And you were born again, birthed child by the word of God. So you are a child of the word. Okay, and the word of God is your father. The word of God is your description. The word of God is what makes you who you are, not your circumstances. 
So when you get yourself in the word of God and put yourself in the presence of the word and begin to worship and sing praise unto the Lord, that spirit of anxiety will fall off. It can't stand in the presence of God because the only thing that's in God's presence is joy. So rearrange your situation by playing the word of God. Rearrange your situation by, by worshiping the word of God. Change your channel. Cut on your radio station that serves and praise God. And I promise you, the weights of this thing will crumble. You have to always put yourself in the presence when pressure is applied. Now, I'm going to tell you before we get to Ephesians and get into this book, you have to put yourself in the presence of God. It is a law of the kingdom. In the presence of the Lord is the what? Fullness of joy. So if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling overwhelmed, the law of the word says in his presence. So if all those things are come, they are come for a season and that's okay. But at the end of the day, they're not there to remain. You have to get out of that. You have to go into the place where God's presence is. Okay. And there you will find where your strength is. There you in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. Now watch this one. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. So if you want strength and you want joy and you want this to fall off, we've got to get in the presence. So isolate everything else that's going on around you and calm the storms and the ideas and the imagination of your mind and choose God, period. And that is enough. Somebody say that's enough. That's enough. That, that is more than enough. That, that's more than enough. Listen to me. It's more than enough. Okay. God will see you through. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So now I don't care what he do. I don't care what she do. I don't care what they didn't do or did do. I don't care how they treated you. I don't care how they walked out and never looked back for you. So, so I know you love him. So trust God, believe God, count him faithful who promise. Amen. God can restore anything. God could bring anybody back. You understand? All right. So we got to move on now. Let's go. I just wanted you to, I, I, you know, I feel glad to share it. I hope it, I hope it talks to you. I hope it gets you. You know, there is nothing in your life that is bigger than your father. And you're going to have to look at God as your source, your father. He is your father. He's your friend. That's my dude. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him like that. Sometimes. <laughs> I talk to him like I tell my family to tell you. I tell him, hey, look, man, that's my guy. Okay, so look, he is. He, I'd be lying if I told you he wasn't. But you know, but you know, at times. But then there are times when I get in trouble and all kind of stuff. So anyway, I ain't going to that. All right, all right. It's relationship, people. All right. So Ephesians, uh, Sherelle told me I am in Ephesians. All right. I hope Ephesians have been blessing y'all. Okay, Ephesians three eleven. All right, real. I'm there. Let's go. Y'all ready to dig in? Let's do it. Uh, to the intent that now unto the principalities and the powers. You knew I was going to 10. 3 and 10. Ephesians 3 and 10. To the intent. To the intent for this purpose. This is one of my favorite ones. I learned this when I was about 25 and I was going through some tough times, man. I was fighting in the world, dealing with some stuff in the church. All kind of stuff was going on in my world, man. People didn't know. But let me tell you something. Uh, to the intent. That now unto the, actually it was about 22, so I was a young man, didn't know nothing, thought I knew something. I mean, it was crazy, man, but I was dealing with it. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers, and I ran across this scripture, in heavenly places, might be known by the church. I realized that my fight was with principalities and powers that influence the behaviors of men. So if I could speak to the spirit and speak from the domain of kings, then I could speak from the laws of orders of a king and what a king just like god honors his word and bring it to pass well where did his word come from out of the mouth of his prophets and it was written by the spirit of god through his men and god honors it well that's what he does with you so that's why when we life and death is in the power of tongue and when we begin to grow in the kingdom we talk different we speak different we begin to shape our world differently by our words so to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. And the reason why people keep coming against you and why you're facing situations is so that you can speak out. Loved ones will tell you not to get on the cross. And although their intentions are good, he will. He did rebuke Peter and say, get behind me, Satan, because what's inspiring your thought, Peter, right now is driven off your emotions and love for me. 
I came here for a purpose to die. I just got finished praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, sweating blood, dropping sweats like blood, sweats of blood, and I and I had to make a decision to lay my will down. Now we gonna sit up here and have a conversation about nevertheless. I just said nevertheless, not my will, but your will, which is tough. I can't imagine what Jesus went through. I won't even share with you what I think he went through. I don't. I don't know if he just went. Nevertheless, let thy will be done. No, oh, man. I mean, you know, you're talking about me about to get on the cross, be crucified, get a snapshot view of somebody ripping my flesh out, and the same people who I healed standing up, lying on me, spitting on me, telling them to crucify me, and I'm doing it for them. Then I got to die on the cross and tell the people that's at the foot of the cross and tell my father to forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Oh man, please. Then fool. If it was, I told him I was in prayer last. We can have two. I told him, I don't know how you did it, man. I'd have been like, forget them. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm thankful because I'm saved behind it. But nevertheless, not my will be done is a totally different thing. And sometimes pressure come against you to change and get your words or people will speak against what God has given you because they, they, don't, they don't know what God has said to you. They weren't in the prayer. And so they'll speak out on it and they'll say things to try to govern your words to line up with the ideas that they have. And it ain't nothing but inspired thought by someone else that's trying to stop you from the plan of God, principalities and powers. They know what your purpose is. Well, they know the ideal of God's plan. They rebelled against it. They know the ideal of God's plan for you. And because of that reason, they rebel against it. And they know the power of your speech and how you form words and how faith is developed in you by your own speech. You will begin to believe what you say. If you keep calling yourself Abraham, you're going to start thinking you're a father of many nations, that you can become like, you know, have kids like this, uh, as many as the stars in the sky and the sand shores. You'll start seeing that because you didn't name yourself Abraham. And the greatest faith you will ever hear will come out of your own mouth. That's why Jesus, Jesus would always do it because he was the son of God. But he also had to come down here as a man. So he would ask questions about himself. Be like, who do you say the son of man is? And he was saying it out of his mouth. I'm a son of a man. I have to remind myself of that because I'm also the son of God. See? So, you know, out of your mouth, you, you, you're, going to, you're going to develop great faith. Come on, say it with me. Out of my mouth, I'm going to develop great faith. Out of my mouth, great faith lives see because what you say is what you believe what you say what you say not what someone else say what you say and so you might be the only one saying it so stand alone you know how many people laughed at Noah but what he said God honored okay so we're judged by these words okay so the principalities are always trying to put pressure on you to get you to think differently so you speak the wisdom of God by the revelation that the Holy Spirit gives to you when you commune in prayer with him. He'll bring to your remembrance the word of God and give you revelation of the word, which is Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the living word. He, was, he became flesh. So when you sow the word inside of you, you're really sowing the word, which is God inside of you and the spirit that's in that word in you. And you begin to speak what God has to say and the Holy Spirit in prayer will give you revelation. And when you speak from that place and start talking, man, you're making known what the will of God is to the principalities and powers that live in the, in the world or domain of the king's domain, meaning the spirit realm. When you do that, the earth is this side effect. I mean, it's like the second thing. Everything, um, everything that you see naturally typically happens first spiritually. Uh, before there was light, there was darkness and God inserted light that happened in, in the realm of the spirit and God light was there and God brought it into the earth. Uh, before there was a son of God, God spoke it from the spirit and then the son of God came before there was a promise of salvation. God spoke it from the spirit and then it was showed up. So your first everything is first spiritual and then it comes out into the world. The world is the display of spiritual matters. Come on out. Come on. I need you to wake up here because this is the way in which you win in the warfare. You will not win. You will not win on your own if we if you try to do it on your own strength. This is just not going to happen. You need a savior. Okay. It's not going to be by your own power that you're going to be able to do this. Okay. It's not enough. 
You need the power of the Spirit of Christ. So, because He's the only one that overcame the world, and you partnering up with Him in times when you're weak, you could be made strong because He's in you. And now you can do all things through Christ who enables you or empowers you. Nothing's done in our own ability. Even our righteousness is filthy. Okay? So when we might as well take advantage of the entire process of the kingdom instead of uh, bits and pieces. Okay? We want to go out in the wilderness and gather some of the manna. Uh, and, you know, this isn't the time to be gathering just a little manna. God has given us his whole spirit. Amen. Come on now. He wants us to grow. So, and growing means coming to know who we are. Um, so without going too far in a ditch, listen, the principalities and powers, they rebelled against God's idea when he made man. All right. So if you speak what God is saying about you, then death no longer rules over you because now you're speaking what God said. So you're back in connection. The problem with Adam, when he failed and he separated himself from God, that's when the death happened. He was no longer found in the garden where the presence of God was, meaning he couldn't be directly connected to the to the definition of who he is because he was made to be in the image of God. And after the likeness, which would take him spending time every day with God being built up into the likeness. But once you disconnect, death happened. Once you went out of the garden, death happened because that's where the presence was. So now that you're in the field, you're being shaped by something else. And that world is an enemy of God. I hope I'm making it plain so you can see it. All right. And it hasn't been the same since. And what, what we're saying is, is that the reason why we serve Jesus, come on. The reason why we serve Jesus is because he puts us back in that garden. We preach he's an advocate. I'm telling you what that means. We preach he's an intercessor. I tell you, I'm showing you what that means. Man, sin brought forth death. Except it couldn't stay in the presence where God was. So God was in that garden. That man's whole creation was defined by the whole purpose of his idea was to be in the image and likeness of God. And without him being connected to God, he is something else. Okay? Alien. He becoming an alien. He has no familiarity with God. He don't know who he is. But when the man then connects back into the garden through, through the salvation plan of God, he now is one with the Father. They two become one. one. And how that's done is, God's plan was, I'm going to teach, the, give the word to the world. So God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And the only thing that he, can, he could make a son out of himself was the word. So the word became flesh. Oh, come on now. It's settling in some of you. You're getting it. So the only thing he could do, the only thing he can give was let there be light. Because God in and of himself is self-sufficient. He is God in and of himself. By himself. Ain't no other beside him. He's the first. He's the very beginning. So he then had to, out of himself, create a body and, and form one. And put it on word, put word on it from, from the word itself versus Adam being made from the dust of the ground. Jesus was made from the word. See that? And the word became flesh. And so that he gave that word to us. But what he also did with that word is he was willing to insert himself into something that was perfect. The word was perfect, unflawed, unsinful, and was not of a human. It, it didn't come through human means, meaning it didn't come through the man bloodline. The man holds the seed and plants it into the woman. And, the, and Jesus didn't come through the man's seed. He was perfect, the perfect man. So God could insert his perfect spirit inside of the perfect man. And that's what you was reading about and saw when he baptized John, when John baptized him. So that's the a deposit of the fullness of the spirit of God at 100% level. Okay, so now that man... The word and that spirit are one. So Jesus would walk around saying, me and my father are one. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So now if you take that, that word and put it in your heart, what you're putting in your heart is the word and the spirit that abides in that word. Am I making sense? Come on. Am I making sense? Am I before I go any further? Because if we're talking about spiritual warfare, I had to make this make sense. Okay. Um, is it making sense? Come on. Talk to me. Thumbs up. Hands up. Something. Say something to me. Are y'all there? Anybody home? Y'all there? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that, that spirit that embodied the word, that word now when put in your heart, okay, can now come and dwell in you. So that's why Jesus said it this way. He said, if you abide in me, all right, so by definition, who is me? 
Oh, I'm the living word, the word that you're putting inside of you. So if you abide in me and my words abide in you, watch what happens. Me and my father, see that? We're going to come make our residence in you. We're going to come make our abode in you. Why is that? Because when you sow the word into your soul, which is the ground, the, our, the, the dirt, where you sow the word, it has the ability when water to grow. And that spirit that's in that word begins to speak. You give it voice when you pray. So it's, it, it works in conjunction with. So the when death happened, uh, with Adam, Adam separated from God, and now Jesus brought you back by the word. And now that you've got the word, if you're speaking it, all heaven knows. All spiritual things know. Because they know that people in darkness don't talk like this. So you become a, you somewhat become a target because they, they recognize, hey, this person is spending time with God. How would they even know what God's intentions were when he decided to make a man? So that's why Ephesians 3.10 said, to the intent. Because you wouldn't have known, you would have had to have been walking in life as if there was no sin and gain, to gain the knowledge and revelation about the things that you're saying when you spend time with God. Because only people who walk with God can have revelation of the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus said the kingdom's inside of you. And the only way to get it is to unlock the treasure of God inside. So when we do that the, and we start speaking like a king, speaking from the king's domain, all of heaven and heaven's atmosphere understand this guy is a citizen. He functioning like a citizen. He could be he could be a problem and a threat to my kingdom of darkness. That's a problem. She could be a problem to the kingdom of darkness. That's a problem. So you gotta be, you know, just just know that. Okay. Alright, so but when you start speaking, now I can move on. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers, see there, in heavenly places might be known by the church. That's why, because the church gets its direction and the governor is God. It's Christ. So Christ in you gives you the hope by revelation of the knowledge of the kingdom of glory. He talks to you about the kingdom. So when you spend time praying in the spirit and spend time studying the word and spend time talking to God and acknowledging him in your matters, he then begins to talk and speak. Okay. And if you look through the Old Testament, you'll see they used to always acknowledge God. Should I go to war? Lord, what should I do? Well, I didn't hear from him. Let me make an offering before I do something. See? That's how it works, people. Powers in heavenly places that it might be made known by the church. What is the manifold wisdom of God? That's the manifestation of the wisdom of God. Man reconnected to the garden. That garden is now the kingdom. That kingdom will be eventually become the paradise of God. Oh, I'm teaching. I know I'm talking right because this is the Bible. This is the B I B L E. I'll show it to you in a word, but I'm not got time for that. I showed y'all this before. So, so I'm just telling you, when 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 we get this, you will you will your fight becomes different because now you're not dealing with people. I've had family and relatives talk stuff. I have family and relatives just cut me off completely. Trust me. It started if it didn't work with the distant relatives, it worked with the ones that love them. It didn't. It just kept going all the way down to, you trust me, it'll get all up in the, it, listen, okay? So you just got to know how to stand there for it. And he's about to say that. Come on, let's keep going. I got to get you through it. In whom we also have boldness, see, because why do you have boldness? And watch this here, and access, see that? Why, he, why is he saying it that way? Because you're access in the king's domain. You're in the kingdom. In the kingdom, you discover there's a throne. God is on his throne. If you roll back to heavens, we could, we would see if literally Revelation says it's going to happen. But if but if it's going to happen, then it already is. It just means people not aware of it. But let me tell you something. There's a courtroom and God sits on the throne. It's, he has a throne. And, and I'm telling you, you have access to his courts. And you testify. Not get up there and testify. And I'm not saying this is bad. I'm not putting it down. I'm not doing that. But I just want you to understand you have a testimony and your testimony is a truth. Your testimony is what you say about yourself that, that grants you access. You started off confessing your sins. You started off with confession. So your whole life is built on confession. The whole life of the kingdom is built on confession. Say it. The whole life of the kingdom and its operation is built on my confession. Come on. The whole life of the kingdom and its operation is built on my confession. You were born again by confessing. 
God didn't change the formula. Why are you changing it? Your confession makes who you are. It is your testimony inside of God's court. He charges you with guilt and shame. You stand up and say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. They all come around and start talking about how you, the son of the devil, and you cast out devils by devils. And then you say, I'm also, oh, if devil tears kingdom down, you sound foolish, man. See? So it's what you say is your confession. You are a prototype. You are a type of. You are a duplicate. You were made after the one who set the table. It was Jesus who gave the example. You're the follower. Go on and walk it out. Come on, walk it out now. Oh, don't make me go there. Y'all gonna say your boy ain't saying. Stop it. Now walk it out. Now walk it. You understand? Okay. Walk it out. It's in your tongue. And so when you get access to God through the spirit of life, the Holy Spirit will talk to you. And you, you see, you, you, you talk with confidence. And it's an uncommon message to people who are unfamiliar with this common way. But you're in the commonality. You're in the common law. You're in the common wealth. I taught you that. You're in this wealth, and they're not. So why would you expect them to agree with you? They don't. So just shout it until you can catch one of them walking by and it hits them differently. Because at the end of the day, they disagree. And they're not just in darkness, they're in deep darkness, okay? It's anytime you turn the car upside down and tell me to drive it off its wheels, then that car ain't moving. And you trying to move it, you pushing it to make it move. Man, please, that car ain't rolling. I don't know about you, but I play spades. I like spades. I don't care if judge me. I got three in the possible. I'm not going to tell you I got six. The books are the books. And the way the book said it is the way that it is. And you can't override and change the book. You pushing for no cause. Come on now. That's the key description of how dark things can get. And when it gets that dark, then that lets you know what you're dealing with. Why would we back up now? Why would we slow up now? So the reason why the pressure is applied to you is to try to get you off of what your confession is. Because you are a threat. You have the power to change government. You can speak to principalities and the power of their influence in the mind of your governor can change. They start implementing. <laughs> We're going to start praying in schools. Yeah, I bet you are. That ain't you. That's what you say. Because when the saints begin, it ain't just you. Now, don't get too puffed up. But, do, but be confident. And when the saints pray, things happen. Okay? You're the governor in the earth. Amen. Praise God. And God has trusted you with his word, trusted you with his spirit. And why, why do you got the two most powerful forces that ever will exist, ever has exist, ever will exist, and, ever, and, 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 and that exists now? You're dealing with the God of the past, present, and future. He is the right now. And because he is inserted into your matters, your matters is subject to change suddenly. Come on. Oh, praise the Lord. It's true anyway. It doesn't matter what you see. It's true. Doesn't matter what you think. Change your thinking. Something wrong with the thinking. Okay? And if you if you if you, you got to renew your mind. Get it right. Because we go to God with boldness. I'm almost done. I get it. All right. According to his eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus. Where is his wisdom from? And what is his eternal purpose? So this tells you, look, I'm not rushing. No, I'm not doing it. The manifold wisdom of God is the manifestation of God's wisdom inside of the thoughts of the man. Why? Because... If he gets his thoughts of him, he going to speak life from the kingdom, from the king's domain. He couldn't have otherwise gotten his knowledge except he was a citizen. That's validation of this man's salvation. That's revelation, y'all. That's validation of this man being reconnected with his salvation. His salvation is found in the garden of God. His salvation is found in the kingdom of God. His salvation is found in the paradise of God. They are all three, one and the same, just like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're all one, three, and the same. And I'm telling you right now, when this man gets that kind of wisdom, the father, the word, and the man that was born and shaped and framed by the word and deposited the word in him, the man himself, the atoms of the world, the father, the son, and the word becomes one also. All right? So God is in us. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, me and my father going to come and reconnect. These three going to be one. It's still one. 
So that part don't change. And how it happens is the man can't get this wisdom. No man cometh unto the father except through me. But you come with boldness and confidence because you didn't found him. And so we go to him and we talk to him and he talks to us about verse 11. Go look at, no, don't listen. I'm, I'm sharing the screen. I want you to see this. Let me tell you, let me show you. I'm going to show you. See, I didn't write this. I didn't write this. Look. The manifold wisdom of God, so that's the manifestation of God's wisdom, meaning the world don't have this wisdom because this wisdom is in reservation. So you couldn't have got the, this wisdom is in the garden. This wisdom is in the, you can only come through this to this wisdom, uh, unto this father of wisdom through Christ. You could not have otherwise made it in this garden without the spirit of God showing you where it's at and giving you revelation about it, knowledge of it. According to his eternal, that speaks of an eternal principle or an eternal operation or you partaking of eternal life. You couldn't eat that life if you didn't have no partaking of it. If you wasn't, you know, you can talk about it. You can have that wisdom of God manifesting in your thoughts and you be confident about it. OK, uh, if you were fellowshipping with something eternal. And this is his purpose. And he purposed this in Christ Jesus. So all things were made by the word. And the way in which he created it was that he put everything in Christ. So that if once you come to him, you could connect to what was in the garden. But without it, you have death. Simple, uncut. You don't know about it. So you're dead to it. That's what you say to people who got something, you know, they're in the world and they smart. Man, I'm not listening to them. They smart in their knowledge. We're smart in kingdom knowledge, in manifestation of the sons of God knowledge, and come to know who he, who he made us to be knowledge, and being des designed and crafted by the living God knowledge. They knowledge leads to darkness and death and separation and isolation from the manifold wisdom of God, which was Satan's original plan. Satan said, I'll be like the most high God. I'll mount myself on the mount of the congregation. I'm going to get all up in their thoughts. So much so that they won't even see you. Now, what's your ideal about making this man again God? I'm going to be God. That's what he said. I'm going to be to them God. And now they worship this thing on their stages. Come on, y'all better leave me alone. See, this is how you pull this mess out. You show, you show, you show them exactly who they serve. Hey, they shouting it and they saying it, but I don't know if they realize it. And he could care less about them. He, the whole purpose of his design and creation was to serve the children of God. That's what angels were created for. To, are they not all called to be ministers of those who shall become heirs of salvation? That would be you. Why are you serving them? What are you doing? You, so you're laying down your crown to a devil. Let's go on. Who got time for that? Who got time to be debating with that kind of nonsense? Ain't nobody going to debate that. You stand up for God. You declare your kingdom and don't be shy about it. I don't care. That's And that's what this is. See, look at 12. There it is. I'm, I ain't fussing, but I'm fussing. Look, in whom we have boldness. Don't nobody care what y'all think. Forget your thoughts. Your thoughts are twisted. You're trying to push a car backwards on his, off on his hood and not on his wheels. Come on, man. And want to tell me this is this glitter and gold. Man, you better get out of here. Okay? We ain't no fool. Don't you be nobody's fool. Stop it. And I, if it was my family, I'd tell them. I wouldn't care who it is. Kids or not. I'm going to tell them. Cousins, aunties, sister, mama, daddy, don't care. I'm telling you. The fact of the matter is, you're wrong. Wrong is wrong. Don't try to make wrong right. And access with confidence. Notice that you have confidence that when you talk to God... God's going to talk to you. He got your back, man. Do you know who you're talking to? This is, you know, if you could have killed me, you'd have hit me with the bullet. If they could have killed you, you'd have been dead on the table with the medical condition you had. When they was doing the surgery and said you wouldn't make it, you would have died dead. So ain't no time to be scared. and It's time to buckle down now because we're in the fight now. You know, you've got two kingdoms growing. I told y'all that. It's two kingdoms growing and, man, they forming. And we can pretend like we don't see it, but we, we see it, okay? And if you don't see it, it's because we're doing this. The Bible said we do this. They have closed their eyes. They have closed their ears. 
lest the light of the gospel can come in. So we're just going to shed light on it. And I challenge you to shed light. Shed, be the light. Tell them because they are dying. And not only are they going to hell, hell is not it. The problem with hell is, hell is the situation that they're telling, well, we're just going to go to hell. No, there is a lake of fire. And the Bible talks about how there will be no more lake. Go to Revelation. I don't have time to show you. They get all out of the oceans. They get all out of them lakes. That's, it's already set up, I believe. Okay? And there will be no more sea. That's what the Bible said. Okay? And you get all out of that stuff. Okay? Because So, listen. It ain't hard for me to believe. All you got to do is pay attention. All right. Hell is just a holding place, baby. We used to... <laughs> Yeah, that's not that's not the final all in all. Okay, uh, all right. Verse thirteen. Let's keep going. By confidence, by faith. Okay, watch this. I want to want y'all to see this. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of Him. So Jesus' faith. I'm I'm, I'm saying it this way for a reason. Jesus' faith declared that He was the Son of God. You have been born again as a child of God. You are a child of God. If a child, then a king. All right? Does that make sense? Then you have something to inherit. Let's not even go king. If a child, then an inheritor. I told you. Remember I was showing you inheritance a few months back? So you, so you got this inheritance, and it, we have to lay hold of it. So take salvation. You got to take it. And there's always these things that's coming up against you, pressing against your thought life. You can call those waves. Those are life tries to send you waves of the sea to get your mind in balance so you can be double minded. Stuck between your old man and your new man, your renewed mind, your, the needing to renew it all the way. So you do this dance because of the winds that's blowing. You in the ship, you out on the sea with Jesus. But when these winds get to blowing and it seemed like he ain't saying nothing because he's asleep. See, you should have took a nap with him and followed it and <laughs> not let the winds throw you off. But 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 you still with him have sense enough to tap on him, go to him, find strength in him. If you stay woke in the middle of a wind, I'm going to tell you now, some winds of life I slept through. I just went to sleep because I, my mind was tripping. And when you go to sleep. When the wind is blowing, you'll wake up fresh, you'll wake up new, you'll wake up not thinking about it, and the Holy Spirit can better lead you to the solution, and you might be able to tell the peace to be still, because the side effects of the wind isn't affecting you. Trust me, I've been there, okay? My mind wanted to leave, my mind wanted to do this, my mind wanted to quit, my mind wanted to walk away from it all, my mind wanted to... My mind wanted to go off and just start a new me. My mind wanted to just, I can do me. Come on now, stay with me. I'm I ain't, I ain't exempt. So I, I, all that happened. And I'm telling you, I just went to sleep. I went to slept on it, slept on it. And I'm better now than, I, than, than ever. Because, because the Lord formula works. All right. All right. Wherefore I desire that ye faint. You notice that he just said that? See that? See, that's why he's saying it. Those guys in the boat, they was fainting. Their heart was fainting. Okay? And let me tell you something. The kingdom of darkness, because it's advancing, their systems start failing. You, that's why you see inflation. That's why you see, I, I'm, I'm telling you all now, I think we're in the second birth pain. I told you all when this kicked off. So look, I think we're in the second birth pain. Watch out for it. More inflation. Watch out for challenges with, with the water. Watch out more for more rumors of wars and actual wars. Because there's supposed to be wars and rumors of wars. So it's a twofold. So one war can trigger other wars. Okay? And I think the biggest one we're watching, it looks like it's right in the balance. And I won't even tell you who it is because I know I've been screaming it since we've been talking for over the last year, since Trump signed that treaty. All right, so we, we're going to move on. Uh, but just know that brings situations that can cause people heart to faint for them to, you know, and the Bible talks about that. It talks about how people will say to the mountains, fall on us. You know, it, 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 it can get bad. Okay, so I'm not preaching death doom. But I do want you to have an awareness because the Bible said when tribulation happens, um, that pe many people, you know, the hearts going to fail them. Well, guess what he said? Look at what he said when his was happening. 
not at my tribulations. See, these were the beginnings of tribulations when they started preaching our kingdom. Uh, we're at the end of our kingdom's establishment. See, uh, So wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations. I'll talk more about it later. I know it isn't quite registering quite right, but I, I, I want to try to get through this. For you which... For you, which is your glory. Do you know what that means? Here, let me let me open that up. I want you to see what all, all what Paul said he was going through for him getting this revelation and insight was for your opinion, judgment, and views to be impacted. Opinion estimate, whether good or bad concerning someone. Okay? Uh, and it talks about all the glory. It is, it's going to go all the way up to... All, this covers all realms. It speaks to the manifestation of the, the coat that God puts on us that was taken from Adam when he saw himself naked. Okay, it's called the coat of glory. It's what it, the, the coat of many colors that, that was put on Joseph, okay, uh, by his father, uh, represents the coat of glory that God puts on man when, when, when the nature of sin is consumed by glory. Okay. Jesus had him when he rose from dead. He was like, hey, look, don't touch me. I ain't ascended to my father yet. Because the coat of glory was on him. Meaning death, the operation of death was consumed by the light. The, the, the operation of death over the nature that he had became. Because remember, Jesus became sin that you might be, be made. So he became it on the cross. That's why she's, don't touch me. Because the the. The, the, the consuming power of the kingdom of heaven where glory is what lights the city, the coats of the men and children of God. It, it's the clothing that Adam had on before he fell. Okay? And it was the clothing that Jesus had to restore as a man in the presence of God. So when he had ascended to his father, he presented himself glorified. I'm telling you, he's coming for a glorified church, okay? So that same spirit which raised Christ from the dead is going to quicken your mortal body with this same glory, all right? But it, it, it has many meanings. See how it says stars and moons? Because they have their coat. Uh, the stars and the moons have their coat. And I told you, uh, you know, I don't have time to go into it, what the stars are. Uh, you know, you can't number them. Scientists tell you that, but I don't, I don't have time to go to it. But they also have uh, what's called a celestial body. Uh, that's their coat. Uh, so everybody has a coat. Uh, it talks about kingly majesty. Uh, it talks about absolute perfect inward person excellent because your inward man is now consuming your outward man and there's no more war of the outward nature, which Satan has influence over. So you've cut the influence off. I know this. See, this is this is see how much is in this. That's why we can't rush. Uh, it talks about the condition with God, uh, the Father in heaven, at, to which Christ was raised. See, that's what I was just talking about. After he had achieved the work on earth, see there. So, th so, so he presented a man. He was presented not as the Son of God, but as a man, Son of God. You know, it took Adam fall. It took a man, Jesus, Jesus uh, resurrection. Okay. So, okay, so I, 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 again, there's a lot of meat in that. That's, that's, that's an hour just on that. But this is what Paul went through and why tribulations come for the manifestation of the sons. You see that? And that's where we are. I believe we're in the manifestation of the sons of God on the earth. Earth has been groaning. And when we teach them who they are, they're going to learn to begin to access this operation. So it is important that you stand and teach and stand and declare what you yourself have discovered because you can't teach what you do not know. So you have to begin to practice, 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 invest, invest, invest. So, so, so to the spirit of God. And the more we do that, the more we begin to discover our true identity and who we are. Someone has robbed us of our identity. Oh, yes, he did. Look, thief. He's a thief. That's what Jesus was declaring. He's like, man, this man is a thief. I don't understand. Why are we allowing this man to rip us off? It's like your man breaking your house. Are you going to let him just walk through the house and steal everything? Murder everybody in the house? Then take all your goods and walk out the door? And not go? you ain't going to even open your mouth and say nothing? 
Did you not know your weapon is in your mouth? Your sword, of, we're going to get there. It's in this book, but I'm trying to help you. You know, so by the time we get there, it's like, oh, I see it. Your sword is in your mouth, your, your weapon, because angels hearken unto what you say when you have access to the king's domain. I can tell you, God hears you. Okay, now he don't hear everybody. I'm just going to tell you. He, he does not hear everybody. I can show it to you. They say you can say that's God all you want to, but I'll show you in scripture. The Bible says it. He don't hear everybody, but he does hear you. And if he hears you, then all of heaven hears you. And remember, it's first spiritual. And then over time you start seeing what you say. Okay, I'm giving y'all a lot. I sense it. It's all. <laughs> Okay, just walk with me a little bit more, okay? Let me get you at least to 816. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family, see that? Family in heaven, see that? So you see what your operation is, and earth is named. This is why when you're asking in the name of Jesus, you can't just be saying, oh, Jesus' name. Yeah, you can say in Jesus' name, but if you don't know him, if you're not a, a part of his association, affiliation, identity, if you are not a part of his citizenship, if you are not a part of the commonwealth, if you are, you know, you, you're, when you speak, you speak from the king's domain. If you don't, if you're not confident about that, then, then you're just talking. You don't even know what you believe. You just, you're a church member. And there's nothing wrong with being a church member, you know, but there's more to it than singing in the choir uh, parking the cars, cleaning the church, working in the daycare, taking the offering, giving your tithe and offering. You can do all those things and never know God. We got the knowing for ourselves. You got to spend time. If you do all those things, those are good, terrible works. But sowing to your spirit is the greatest thing you can ever do. You and I can ever do. We can, the best thing we can ever do is build our relationship with God. Then do all those things. Because those things won't keep you. I know somebody making you a deacon, somebody making you, and you ain't been in the church 10 minutes. You, somebody making you a pastor, somebody make, that won't keep you. What will keep you is when you know God and you know him for yourself. And you're going to have to know him. In this hour, you're going to have to know him. You're going to have to know in whom you believe for yourself. <sighs> 16. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, watch this, to, for, so in other words, so that, so that the spirit of Christ in you might equip you with what you need to be strengthened with might. And the only way that's going to happen is by his spirit. So when you were born again, you were born spirit man. That made the spirit of God the father because you couldn't have been born except you were born by the spirit. So now you're no longer, you're trying to function like the operation of the world we come from and it doesn't seem to work and it's because we're functioning from where we came from. But when we're born of the spirit, we walk in the spirit. We live a life with conversations in the spirit. And we perfect a life of living the life of the spirit through practice, practice, practice. We continue to sow, sow, sow so we can know, know, know. And what happens is the spirit is inside our inner man. So if God is talking to you and living in you, he has a right to speak through you. End of discussion. There ain't nobody in the world to tell you you're crazy. You're talking to yourself. But this book just said, by his spirit in the inner man. Where is the inner man? Inside of you. What's inside of you? The treasure of the inner man, the spirit of God that you were born from. If you let that man speak, he speaks from the life of that spirit that he was born from. 
if you silence his mouth, you put the muzzle on the ox. He can't, he can't tread the cord. But I'm telling you, when you let the spirit of God in you and you open your mouth, the life of the spirit will be on the tongue of you. And when you speak, that life has creative ability to populate and replenish this world of darkness. You are the light of the world. Amen. Can I just do one more verse? I'm, I'm sorry. I want one more. Why is he in the inner man? That Christ may dwell in your hearts. You have a conscious awareness of him. So when you at the malls, when he looking good, when you sizing up pieces and parts, let me tell you something. God, you telling God we sizing up them pieces and parts. No, I'm just telling you. I know because I size up pieces and parts. So I'm a man. And I'm telling you, when you sizing up pieces and parts and you got God in your heart, man looking on the outward appearance, God is seeing what you're thinking. And that's where change has to happen. Not dressed up in fig leaves, looking like we got it together. It starts here. And when you get it in here and you start confessing what's in here, opening up your mouth and being honest about it and allowing the Lord to heal you of your thoughts, then your actions will follow. But if you suppress your actions for the sake of showing perfection to the saints that you got it, but your heart all miswired, that's a fig leaf. That ain't going to get it. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And God, we thank you for what you're doing inside of the hearts of your people. And uh, let's just, let's, let's just, just right now, let's do this here. I'm going to let you go. We're just going to confess today. Uh, so, Father, we thank you for the blood that you shed for us. So, let's thank him for the blood. Father, we thank you for your blood. And how your blood just washes away all sin. And we thank you for your word that washes away the, the mind, the thoughts of sin. And we thank you for the spirit of your word. Come on, let's go back. We thank you for your blood that washes away all the sins. That takes care of the outward man. Then we, we thank you for your word which washes away all the thoughts and the mind of sin. That takes care of the inward parts. And we thank you for your spirit that recharges us with the mind of Christ that establishes the kingdom. So, Father, we thank you for all these parts working us and make us whole. And we believe to receive the best. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you all. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for being so diligent. You keep this up. I'm going to keep going. If you cut it off, I'm going to stop. At least I'm going to stop on here. But I pray that this is blessing you. And I pray that Ephesians is blessing you. Uh, and I hope that you're getting something out of this and seeing the operation and how it works. If you knew how it worked before, then I, I pray that it's strengthening you and giving you more revelation of it. Uh, if you did not know, I pray that you're coming to the knowledge of it uh, and that you exercise uh, this knowledge and that the spirit guides you to more. In the name and authority of the Lord Jesus, I pray. All right, you all. See you on next week. God bless.